AI image generation to help support our joke script creation with the practice news headline topic of the Trump felony court conviction. We're now imagining we have our raw material, our rough drafts of jokes that we can now add AI images to related to our topic so we could basically put together a script which will also have AI images to accompany the script. Noting that picking the topic is often the first hurdle that people have trouble with, which we have touched upon in prior presentations or sections. This time we're going to be looking specifically at how we might use AI tools to add images that can really make some of our joke scripts pop and make some jokes that might not work without AI images actually be funny simply because of the AI images. So one way you might be choosing topics is you might use news headlines. That's one of the easiest ways to do it because you know that those headlines are already popular. They're already trending so that you, you can make jokes on them. So you can look at normal news. You can see what other comedians are putting in place in terms of their jokes related to the current political topics. You can also look at normal phrases and idioms, looking them up in like a normal search in your favorite browser, such as like the going gets tough, the tough gets going, for example, because those are phrases that are easy to deconstruct. And those are what I might call more evergreen type of topics, because you can always take whatever you construct from that standpoint and usually kind of shoehorn it into whatever topic it is that you're looking at in any particular time. Whereas with the news topics, they're going to be more specific to what is happening at a point in time. And you could probably deconstruct them, taking components of them and reworking them into other material. But obviously, they're going to be more specific and have more of a shelf life. Okay, so we've been taking a look at uh, raw jokes, noting that I would usually put a whole script together before I look into the AI images because the AI images can take a little bit of time to generate. However, you also might put the AI images together as you create the jokes because the AI images might lead you to say, hey, look, this joke wasn't that good. But the AI image that we came up with really makes the joke funny just because of the image. So it might be best to do it this way. You can kind of do it either way. I tend to basically think I'm going to put together the full script and then I have pretty good confidence that I can have an idea of the AI images that will work. And I have pretty good confidence that no matter what the script is at, I can also find video clips that I can put into uh, the script as well afterwards. And therefore, I use less time looking up images and video clips, which I'm not actually going to add to the script. However, I think I might buy, I might have a little bit longer process, but be able to find better images if I looked at images as I kind of piece the jokes together and then decide which pieces of the jokes would fit together best based not only on the text, but also on the AI images I find and related video clips. All right, so what we did last time is we've taken a look at ChatGTP or ChatGPT. I always say that backwards. And we've tried to say, give me seed ideas to help me create a script material around just this headline. And we just put the headline in there. This is a very popular headline, obviously a very political headline. I tend to like the political headlines because they're just more intrinsically interesting to me. I know they put off a lot of other people. If you don't agree with me politically, you can still use the tools here to you know, do, construct whatever you want, right? But we're gonna, that's why we're going to be using this topic. And then we basically asked for uh, prepositions or assumptions that are made within the headline because that incongruity is what then leads to the jokes. So we asked ChatGPT to give us all of the implicit and explicit assumptions. And then we can either simply use the headline itself, felony convictions of Donald Trump or the president or ex-president or however you want to phrase it, and then basically break some of the explicit or implicit assumptions or we might use some strategy such as a narration with a protagonist and antagonist, possibly with the help and use of AI tools to show on screen protagonist antagonist that are having a conversation perhaps 
which can help to define more clearly some of the implicit assumptions setting up the jokes so that then you can break those assumptions. That's what incongruity is. That's what the basis of the jokes are generally going to be. All right, so the first one, uh, we said the, the role and identity. The term president is used, which, which explicitly refers to someone holding or having held a high government position. So that's obviously what we assume to be the case with president. When we say President Trump has been f convicted of a felony, we assume, of course, that we're talking about president of the country. You could break that assumption and say, well, yeah, he's not the president of the country. He's president of like the clown club or something like that, right? Which is kind of stupid and child childish to some degree, but you could probably find a cool image. And if I look at <laughs> chat GTP, and type that in. So I'm using ChatGPT. You could also use Copilot if you have Microsoft. I think they're both driven by, I think it's called Dolly, which is going to be the AI search engine. To me, these are that search engine, which is the basis behind both of these, is gives you the most detail for specific prompts. So if you say something funny, like I want, I want to have you know someone running a race with bananas for shoes or something like that. It's like, wow, that's wacky. You don't expect really to find that anywhere. But these two seem to do a better job at those really weird things that you might have in jokes than other kind of AI prompts like a mid journey doesn't seem like they're keeping up as much as this one has. I'm going to be using this one, which is um, chat GPT four. you need to pay for four to get the images. But again, if you don't have this and you don't want to pay for it, you can probably do basically the same thing with Copilot, which might be free if you have a Microsoft subscription, or in other words, it's part of that subscription. So then I'm gonna type in here simply the prompt, image of a leader of clowns, uh, the leaders at a pulpit. That's all I entered, and now you've got this, this image, which I think is pretty funny. So again, not my favorite joke because I, I but, we have him at a clown pulpit. It's pretty colorful, pretty nice. If you wanted to make believe that this was Trump or something, he's even got the orange hair, you know? So you don't even have to put Trump's head on it. But but if you wanted to, to portray that as Trump, you could put that in your image with your joke and then take a Trump image and put it over the top. Notice you can't really say, give me President Trump at the pulpit as though he's a clown. You used to be able to, I made a whole bunch of images before they started restricting me that were pretty funny, but, but now they won't let us do it about current people. You can do it about past people. They let me make fun of George Washington. They, I had George Washington cutting down a cherry tree and whatnot uh, in one of my prior scripts that, that, cause they were some weird thing was going on at that point. They had no problem making anything about George Washington or any past person that seems to be political or famous, but I think it's like the current people that's what's currently happening with these chat GPT and other AI generation tools. Obviously, I think they're quite political in what they allow and what they don't. And I think they clearly lean to the left on what they allow and what they don't. But there's always kind of workarounds on what you do. So notice, then after I save that, I'm going to save it as a number. And I'm going to put that into my script here and then highlight it so that when I actually make a script out of this, when I put these jokes together, then I will have the related number that I can then pull in when I do my editing process. So I'm not going to read it that way, right? So I'm not going to do a President Biden thing. President, yeah, like the president of, of, the, of the retarded clown club, 1010, right? You don't do that. You don't read, you don't read that in bit. That's, that's why it's colored like that. So then also note that when I save this, if I have to open it up typically and then save it again, right click and save as to the folder that I want to put it in because I need to change this because it usually starts as a W something file, which personally I can't pull into my editing software and I change the name in part because the original name is way too long, also messing up when I pull it into the editing processor and in part because I want to put a number on it so that I can easily reference that number into my script in a way that doesn't completely ruin it when I'm trying to read it because it's too long. Then also I wanna be able to have this in alphabet or numerical order. 
So I'm going to have the numerical order here. Now, notice that sometimes I might get a clown script and I'm like, ah, eh, that's pretty good, but maybe I want another one. So I might tell uh, the generator to give me multiple items. And when that happens, I usually put a decimal. So for example, here, I wanted it to find a, a something that represents justice that was hidden under the couch. <laughs> and the first one I came up with wasn't great. And then I had a second one. Actually, this one's first and then the second one. So now I do that because then when I put this in my script, I'm just going to put 1120. And then as I do my editing, I can decide which one of these do I think is better. Or possibly, for example, if I thought that this clown theme is a theme that's going to be throughout my script, it's kind of boring if you use the same image. So you might think you would want to or have to use the same image because of consistency. But that's not really the case, actually. Uh, you can make, like I made one that had a, uh, it had a, a someone that was a servant uh, in, a, in a house or something like that. And it actually worked quite well that I made multiple images of the same servant. I had the same prompt. They didn't look at all the same, but they looked enough the same and clearly as like a, like a servant within the White House or something, that they all worked. And that way I was able to kind of switch the images to make it look more like a cartoon because I didn't always have the same image. And it was, I think it made it more interesting. So if you're gonna have a running theme with one image, instead of just keeping that one image, which is gonna be difficult to make dynamic, to change around, just make multiple images that are the, from the same prompt, they'll be similar enough that you can put them side by side, but different enough so that they still keep people interested if your whole thing is basically a bunch of pictures, basically, that's gonna make like a little movie situation. All right, let's take a look at another one. So this one, uh, judge, uh, legitimate judge, convicted, suggest a legal process that has uh, concluded. So, so we're obviously, if we say the prompt that uh, Trump was convicted of felony convictions or so on, then we assume it's a legitimate legal process. We can try to counter that. The opposite of breaking that assumption would say to, that it is not a legitimate legal assumption. Then we come up with a story to, to iterate that. Now, remember, in normal joke construction, the story that you make up might be totally made up to, to break the assumption. In real world, in political stories, usually the issue is that you're trying to you're, you're trying to tell actually the truth, which is comically funny because of the incongruity in real life, right? It's more of a satirical type of thing. Whereas in more slapstick comedy, you're creating a story that will make something true because you took something to some absurd level. So in any case, the, the evidence for, for the case is about as reliable as Hillary Clinton gathering up her emails. So basically trying to undermine it with a comparison here to the political rival of Clinton gathering emails because she is famous for whitewashing her server on the emails. Now this one, I looked up an image and I said, I gave it a prompt image of a woman uh, politician trying to delete all their email before the FBI gets a hold of them. I couldn't say, give me an image of Hillary Clinton deleting all the emails because it would almost certainly say I can't do that because Hillary Clinton is sacred according to the to the woke algorithm, you know. So we can make fun of George Washington if you want, but we're not going to make fun of Hillary Clinton. Ah! So it won't let me. But we could make a generic politician. And then again, if you wanted to look up like Hillary Clinton's face or something like that, you could put that over the top of it. So this wasn't the best image. I would like to have her like looking a little bit more like worried or something maybe, but that's the idea. So we can have an image here. And then if you wanted to use that and put Hillary Clinton's face on top of it, again, I'm not trying to get into AI or misrepresentation problems or anything like that. The idea here would be, it would clearly be a political joke and you would know that it's not actually her because the face wouldn't fit on the body or anything but it would might be funny looking, right? So that's the idea. So the next one, type of crime, felony uh, indicate. So then, so then I put here in the prompt, by the way, I saved it as 1020. And then I said with Hillary Clinton's head, and then I gave it a green, a green background. 
again, so that when I put it into my script, I can add that into the script and I can see the related picture and decide if I want it in the script and then be able to read the script without reading the green part of it because those are the notes, Joe. Those are the notes. You're not supposed to read them. It says right here, read this and then do it while not crapping your pants. You're not supposed to read the part about you not crapping your pants. You just don't crap your pants. It's trying to tell you what to do. You don't read it. Oh my gosh. Anyways, next one. Type of crime, felony, indicates a serious crime. Obviously, if we say he's been convicted of 30 some counts of felony, we assume that felony is a serious crime and so on and so forth. We can then try to break that assumption and say, wow, I thought felony was a serious crime. Apparently, apparently now you can get 34 of them for miscategorizing your travel expenses under meals and entertainment. So as a bookkeeper, as an accountant bookkeeper over here, that's hilarious. You're going to call it a felony? Because I miscategorized my, my travel expenses and meals and entertainment? Man, that's ridiculous. That's hilarious. Anyways, I found then 1030. Uh, uh, so here's a bookkeeper looking worried because he's trying to figure out where to categorize. Probably not the best. I could have had another image of him looking a little bit more like wacky or cartoonish, like he's worried or something like that. But it's okay. And then I tried to find a judge. Now this one, I tried to get like, what did I say? Muscular looking judge holding a gavel that looks like a war hammer because they're wielding the political system. But he looks too like, like normal or nice or almost, right? He's supposed to look more meanish. So I thought that this, <laughs> this guy looks crazy. So that doesn't look like a judge that you want to be, <laughs> that you, you want to be. So I thought that one was better, but they're both okay. So notice I saved them as 104001 and then 104002 so I can use either one. And if I have a theme of the the political system was used unjustly here, I might make a whole bunch of these variants on them so that every time I go back to that theme like a callback, I could use the same image, but maybe I use a similar image to get the same idea but not exactly the same image adding a little bit more interest. So now instead of referencing 1040 and 104002, because I couldn't decide which one was better, even though I think the second was totally better, but I don't know which one I'm going to use. I'm just going to say that theme is coming up. Pick one. So I've got the 1030, the bookkeeper, and then 1040. You can pick any of the ones with the decibel. That's what I'm saying for my creation technique or my next flow will be when I add these to the actual uh, joke, I can pick whichever image is in that series with the same decimal. Due process. The conviction applies that a legal process took place according to the law. So we're going to imagine that there was due process. If we say he was convicted of a felony and so on, we imagine the legal system is working. Due process. These are implicit assumptions. So we could say, wow, due process in this country has become due due process. Like it's crap, get it? Because it's like a place. So you got the pun going on there with due process, but now the do is doo doo. Process of the legal process is doo doo, man. It's doo doo process. All right. I'm not going to refer to Joe Biden on the doo doo process making. I'll, I will not do that. I would not stoop that low as to reference Joe Biden converting our legal system into doo doo process just because he crapped his pants. I won't do it. I won't do it. I have respect i have i have I, i'm too gentlemanly to do that nothing about the process of the case looked normal so now we can find the image on that 1050 and 1060 so we can then go okay so this one was the court so i said i wanted to give a court my prompt was uh image of a court room similar to the one where trump was at and it said can you be more specific and i was like just give it a shot okay and then it gave me this court picture. So this is going to be my serious looking kind of court picture, I guess, that has an actual courtroom that looks like it's doing good court stuff. And then I asked for an image of a judge hitting a piece of crap with a gavel because because <laughs> they turned it into doo-doo. Now, these two weren't that great. I didn't like it. So I was like, try give me another one. And then this one, why is the flat, why is the crap floating? He's supposed to be hitting it with the gavel. I wasn't happy with that. But then this one, I was like, eh, that's not bad. 
even though I expected the crap to be like on the little thingy where the gavel hits. But I was like, yeah, you know, I don't, that, I'll go with that one. So then I pulled that one into here. So now I've numbered this one. I'm going to give a, the court case. And then the, this formal looking court case has then turned into the judge gaveling doo doo. And so there we have it. So then, so, so we can put those in, in order. So then like this one here, wow, convicting such a, so what did I say there? Evidence was presented that led to the conviction. So if we say he was convicted of 30 some counts, we would say, well, there must have been due process is the implicit assumption and the evidence must have led to the conviction. That's the assumption. If we break that assumption, we could say there was no sufficient evidence and so on and so forth. And then we try to represent that with a story that's kind of interesting. So I'd say something like, wow, convicting on such a skimpy evidence is like is like executing someone for being a witch because they float in water, which is what has happened. So I'm trying to make a comparison assumption to the silliness of this judgment to the silliness of some other type of judgment. The thing that popped in my mind was Monty Python trying to convict someone of being a witch during the, what is it, the St. Trout, the witch convictions or whatever they were, I forget where it was, but, but so, so, and they said all these weird, like the logical sounding things that made no sense. Like, well, if she floats on water, she must be a witch and so on and so forth. And so that one, I already referenced like a video clip that I can possibly find. I'm almost sure I could find that on like the YouTubes or something. And then I tried to look for the same thing over here and said, okay, what if I look for, for funny image of a mob trying to convict a witch, like the old Monty Python sketch. And they gave me these ones. So this looks pretty similar because they put a fake nose on her <laughs> and, and they said she was a witch and, and so on. And then they dressed her up and stuff. It was pretty weird. That old Monty Python stuff is pretty weird. But I was like, okay, so they gave me that. Probably no one knows what Monty Python is anymore. It's not funny to anyone but me. But, you know, the, the YouTube algorithm is not going to put it out there. Anyone, no one's going to see it. But that's okay because I'm a soul tuber, man. I don't care. I'm a, I'll do it for the, for the thrill of the creation. But anyways, I put that in here and then I make it green. So the next one. The president likely had an opportunity to defend himself. So if we say he's been convicted of these felonies, we assume the legal process is working. Implicit assumption, he must have had the ability to defend himself. So we can try to break that assumption saying it wasn't fair. He didn't have an ability to, offend him, to defend himself. Again, I'm not trying to argue per se the, legit the legitimacy of the case right now. I'm just trying to break the assumption which I think it, you know, is somewhat fair, but I'm going to exaggerate it, of course, for comedic effect. So then we might say something like, you know, that court case was like a trial by combat where they sent the guy out to fight 20 lions naked, hands tied behind his back, only able to pathetically wield a small, scared, shriveled mace by shaking his hips to defend himself. So just trying to make a story that would basically say it wasn't, you know, it wasn't fair. He didn't really have, didn't really have the tools necessary to put a case to defend themselves or possibly you might say the place that he was at maybe would be the indication, which wasn't exactly fair. Putting, putting the case inside the Coliseum with a bunch of people that hate him as much as a hungry lion hates the person that's a steak that's not laying down to be eaten or something like that would be the idea. So then I found the images on it like this one, images of ancient Colosseum where a naked band with hands tied behind its back facing a pack of lions. And it gave me this one, which I kind of liked, but it's a little, I was, I was imagining it like a little bit more comedic. So then I picked this one. I said, make it more comical. And this one kind of cracked me up because this one lion over here's face is funny. Like <laughs> this lion's like way too happy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with that line? But the guys, the face cracked me up. So that one was kind of funny. So I saved those. I was like, both of those are okay. So I saved them as 1080.01 and 1080.02 so that when I do the editing, I can decide which one I want. And then I put just 1080 in here and then I can pick whichever one I want. This is a long phrase. Maybe I have time for both of them as I'm saying this, as I'm doing the editing. 
So then a court or judicial body had the authority to convict. So if we say he was convicted of felony, the assumption is the court had the uh, had the, the, the right to do that. Right. So and then, of course, we could try to break that assumption. That would be us. The, the having a story that would break that assumption would be the incongruity to make a joke. And then we would want to do that with a creative story of some kind. So you might say it's is just or or is it just me or, or was he convicted of a felony charges in a state court without the power to do so by a judge who abandoned proper due process in instructing the jury. So I'm just trying to list out, you know, a, a story that basically says, hey, wait a sec kind of looks like they charged him with felony conviction stuff in a state court case. And then they basically told the jury to do stuff that doesn't seem quite right. And so so the court had had about as much authority to convict Trump as a white shark convicting a dog owner for abuse for not picking up the dog's crap fast enough. So I'm trying to just paint an image of like, man, that's like this compared to that. A white shark blaming someone for mistreating their dog. And I thought that might be funny because the sea lions of the sea are like, are what they eat sometimes. So I tried to get an image of a white shark attacking a seal, which is kind of like a sea dog, you know, a seal. So now, so, so the white sharks attacking the seal. And, and then I had another one, the white sharks attacking the seal, which is kind of like a sea dog. And then I said, give me a picture of it being in the court case. So now the white shark is convicting someone of abusing his, his dog because they didn't pick up the dog crap fast enough when he basically eats sea dogs. That was my idea. I don't know. That's a bit of a stretch, but I think that this image itself makes the whole thing because that image is funny to me. I thought that image was funny. So I pulled that over here and I had these two, which I named uh, 10901 and 1090. And then this one, I just picked that one up so I can pick whichever, whichever of the sh white shark ones would I want at the time. And then I've got that image of the shark as a judge. So loss of credibility. The conviction might lead people to doubt the president's integrity or decision making. So that would be the assumption if he was convicted of a felony. We could say what would be the opposite of that assumption? The conviction did not lead people to doubt Trump. And then we can say we can make a story based on that that would make that true. That could be a comical story. The conviction led people to doubt the legal system. So now we're saying doubt is not is still the pivotal term here. But instead of doubting Trump, we pivot to doubting the legal system. So honestly, where has justice gone? I don't know, but it ain't we ain't finding it in the Manhattan court. That's for sure. So then I said 1120, 1120. Oh, so I was trying to say, where did justice go? So when I said, where did justice go? I was looking, maybe I'm going to use this little scale to represent justice. And they're looking for justice because they can't find it in the courtroom was my idea. So image of a scale representing justice hidden under a couch. I didn't like that one. So I said, give me another one. They gave me another one. It looks pretty lame. I was like, I don't like that one. So I said, give me an image of a scale representing Justin hidden under a couch, a man lifting up the couch to find it. So they gave me this, which I kind of like, but why isn't he looking under the couch? Like it looks like he's picking up the couch, but he's not really looking for the scale. So I was like, eh, it's okay, but it could be better. So I was like, give me another one. And they gave me this one, which is strange. I kind of like it because he's opening up and he's looking under at least, but why is his feet like over here and then he's got this torso and he's coming up through the middle of the couch kind of weird i didn't look up anymore i just kept that and was like okay maybe that'll work and maybe i just don't use that joke but i kept those two here so 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 i have those if i want to pick that one up and then down here there is likely significant uh, public interest and reaction to this event that's why it was a news so if you say trump was convicted we would assume that there's going to be public interest. That's why they put it in the news headline. Theoretically, we could break that assumption by saying what would be the opposite. There would not be public interest or if there was, it would be positive. In other words, there's an implicit assumption here that there's public interest. The implicit assumption being it would be negative interest for Trump because he was convicted. 
So we could hit that implicit assumption on this implicit assumption made on the initial statement Trump was convicted of so much blah, blah, blah. And we could say, uh, why would the public react? They're not going to react. They don't care because we see how the, the Democrats play ball. The only pitch they got is to throw the ball right at your head and then pay off the umpire to call it a strike. L luckily, their arm is so weak, they can only throw about 50 miles an hour. So I'm basically just trying to paint a picture saying the public isn't interested in this as they would possibly hope that the public was interested in it because they see what is going on in terms of it being somewhat of a political case. Again, I'm painting the picture here that would be a political commentary in ideal circumstances, a political joke aiming at the truth, which is absurd. But if it wasn't a political joke or you might not agree with that angle, then any kind of story that's inconsistent to the premise that we're trying to break would be the thing that leads to the incongruity, making it, in essence, a joke. So then I'm just trying to make that with a comedical story that has good imagery in it, making a comparison to a pitcher that only that's cheating by just throwing pitches at the person's head and then paid off the umpire to to call them strikes. Right. And so we can go over here and say, give me an image of a pathetic old man pitching in a baseball stadium. So they gave me this one and this one looks pretty good in and of itself. But you could decide to put this in and then put Joe Biden's head on it. So he looks all out of it. You know, the Joe Biden head where the one where he's kind of well, they're all like that. But, you know, he looks kind of like he's not right. He's not like there. And then he's and then he's actually pitching. But and then anyways, so I put that one in here 1130. So there's 1130. And then this one political ramifications. The conviction could have serious political consequences for the president's party of administration. So that would be the assumption. If the president was convicted, you would think that might be bad repercussions to the party. We can then say, what's the opposite of that assumption? There will be no significant consequences or that the consequences will be positive. Once again, note, this has an implicit assumption within this implicit assumption based on the statement of the president has been convicted of it's negative. That's what the assumption is. And, the, and we can twist that by saying, What's the opposite? No, it would be positive. So we can say, yeah, there will be ramifications. The public will finally realize the current emperor has no clothes. Well, actually, he does have clothes, but they have been seriously soiled. So in other words, it's not really a negative to the Trump possibly, but possibly the, a negative to the per current person in office, comparing them to an emperor that has no clothes and being revealed, therefore, although he does have clothes, but he crapped himself. So we can then kind of go over here and say, okay, give me an image of that funny image of an emperor who looks like he's crapped his pants. So, so I'm sorry to keep on hounding that one. It's just, that's the latest thing that's currently, you know, in my head right now. So now we've got this one. So, and again, you could leave it as is, or of course, you can put Joe Biden's head on it or, you know, whoever's, whoever's head you happen to be. And then he looks clueless head, clueless, and then something like that. And you could have different. And so anyways, I put that one here, 1140. And then I put that one in here so I can reference that when I put the jokes together. Next, this event would be a notable part of the presidential his history legacy. So in other words, this moment's going to go down in history. Once again, you have the idea that the opposite of would be it's not going to go down in history or you can say, what's the implicit assumptions of this implicit assumption? It is that it's going to go down in history negatively. That's clearly what they want you to think. The opposite of that would, of course, be it's going to go down in history positively for Trump, possibly negatively for Biden. Again, you might not agree with that politically. I'm just saying we're looking for the propositions that are implicit and then breaking them. And from a political standpoint, that's that it's usually you're looking for something that you think is true, hopefully. And then but but in a joke standpoint, it would be anything, any story that you make up that makes the initial assumption false, uh, then would create the incongruity. So we could say, yeah, it will be historical. Honestly, if we still remember Watergate for decades, 
the corruption here will be remembered longer. So we might say, I can think I can phrase that better. I can always work on the phrasing to get it. So if we, were, if we remember Watergate for decades, we'll remember this for centuries or something like that. You know, but again, I'm going to imply that it's anyways, that's the idea. And Watergate was, of course, against the person that was currently in power, the, you know, the president who was then doing political things against his rival that we at the time thought was, man, that was pretty bad. <laughs> but but it seems to me that's nothing compared to what they do like these days. But maybe I'm just maybe I'm just crazy. Anyways, so we said longer. So this is the 1040. So I had 1040 I already used that one. I don't know why. Oh, oh, I reused this one. So this one I had 1040 up top. So this one I could just say I'm going to reuse them. So if you get into a longer script, you might have images where you don't have to create an image for every line because I might have reoccurring themes. So I might say, hey, there's a, it's going to be remembered for the corrupt legal system. It's going to be remembered because of this crazy judge, not because of, <laughs> not because of the conviction, right? That, that, that's, that would be my implication. So notice my point here is that we can oftentimes, when we're creating a script, reuse some of the image just as you would in like a cartoon where you can you'll notice they reuse the background sometimes so when we do our little political comedy or whatever comedy we can do that too media the event would attract extensive media coverage so it so if we say trump is convicted the reason it is in the news is because we would expect it to attract media coverage what would be the opposite of that assumption that we can then break that it will not attract uh, media coverage or possibly an implicit assumption would be that it attracts media coverage for the right reasons or because people are are interested in it and maybe we say it's going to attract media coverage for a different reason so we could say yeah it will attract media coverage because those dang hacks, hacks uh, will disparage whoever George Soros has put on the hit list. Just like they're a bunch of they're a bunch of basically bounty hunters. These writers these days, whoever's on the hit list, whoever wants their paycheck from George Soros, that's who they that's who they crack down on. Now again, I'm attacking George Soros here. I'm not trying to create a conspiracy theory. I'm just saying, you know, there's a dark nefarious force. That may or may not be George. No, I'm just I'm just trying to make something up, right? So that's gonna be some so that's what I made up. So 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 we can then say, okay, I was trying to find like a bounty hunter then that was collecting money, but he's a he's a reporter. So this is I'm not totally happy with this one, but I clearly see that they gave me a bounty hunter because it's a Star Wars bounty hunter. They're collecting money. I don't really like that they made it kind of like the one TV show that seems to be, it's got the helmet of the one TV show that at least had a season that was decent before they fired Gina Carano. But at least, so I would probably search again. If they gave me the bounty hunter that looks like a, like a crocodile or something in the original one or something like that or something, but it's not horrible. So you got a bounty hunter collecting money and, you know, you could put that, that there. And so I've said, eh, I'll, I'll keep that one. So and then we've got the international reaction. Other nations might re react uh, formally uh, or informally to the conviction. So in other words, we're going to assume that if the president was convicted or the ex-president or whatever you want to see, the assumption would be that other nations will see that and they'll look down on us. The, the, Euro, the Europeans will, will snobby us at that. And so, so, and so then, of course, we could say, well, no, they won't look down on us would be the opposite. Or we can, the implicit assumption here is that other nations will look down on us is that we should care about that. So I would think that we can break that implicit assumption by saying, basically, who cares if the other countries look down on us for this or that? So and then we can make a story as to to back that up, for example. So they will. So so we can say normally I would say, who cares what the Europeans think? But these days, I think they're getting less crazy woke than we are. A sure sign that we need to right the ship. 
So basically, I'm just trying to say, okay, why, why would I care what the Europeans think about our president being convicted or this or that? They're crazier than we are. That's <laughs> right. Honestly, if we, need, if we need to take lessons in common sense from the French, we're seriously in trouble or something like that. Now, I'm not trying to put down French people. I, I'm, a, I'm a stupid American over here. I'm a, I don't know much about the rest of the world, but, but I was just trying. But normally, I would think that, you know, so that's anyway. So I'm not trying to offend anyone. I was just trying to come up with something there to break the assumption. But then I came up with a picture, which is probably more offensive. So I said, give me a give me a wacky looking Frenchman. And and this is what they gave me. So, again, as you could put in the, the you could put that in if you're comfortable uh, doing that. All right. So he's drinking wine. He's got the bread, got the mustache. <laughs> anyway, and then we've got. This, okay, precedent, this sets a legal or political precedent regarding handling high-profile figures. So this was a new thing to some extent. It's going to set a precedent. So it, and the opposite of that would be that it wouldn't set a precedent or maybe a different precedent than they would expect the precedent to be set. So it sure has, so I'm going to kind of expand on that one. I'm going to say, well, it sure has set a precedent regarding presidential conviction, and it's not a good one. So I'm going to maybe exaggerate it more than more than they had originally intended. And that's going to cause the incongruity. So the new president, uh, anything goes. It's just like a reality TV show. So I was just trying to get it get it into a rhyme to now say that anything goes. It's not the legal system that is setting the precedent on who should be convicted or on what but rather the politics, which is now being run by social media platforms and getting media clout rather than due process, turning the White House into a, a, a uh, TV show or something. So now I tried to say, give me an image of the White House as a stage for a ridiculous TV show. And this is what they gave me, reality show <laughs> at the White House. So... And so, again, I don't think that was the best joke. I could probably reword it to make it pretty good. But the image, again, almost kind of makes it in and of itself. So so you can have, you know, two two big, large people fighting each other, like on a Jerry Springer stage and the bouncer trying to break them up. And then you could put like Joe Biden and Donald Trump's head on him or something like that. It's like this. What is going on around here? Is this <laughs> or something like that? And then this one. Res responses might vary widely across political lines. Okay, legal ap appeals. The possibility of an appeal or other legal action is implied. So if we say that there was a conviction, we would assume that there might be an appeal process. The opposite of that would be there's not a possibility for appeal or implicit in this assumption is that the appeal process is through the legal system and we can say no the appeal process clearly should not is not going to be dependent on the legal system but on the democratic system given the fact that the legal system has failed us in this regard so we could say something like uh there there's not just possibility for appeal there's a strong possibility for appeal so I'm trying to do a play on words with appeal and appall. The only appeal that matters at this point is the appeal by the people driven by the people's appall. So I'm trying to say it's going to be appealed at the voting area rather than the judicial area. And then I've got images of the American. I tried to say Americans looking appalled. Now, this isn't the best one. I've, I've, I've had some of the <laughs> chat GPT sometimes gives some really funny images of people looking appalled. <laughs> like, they're pretty funny. This one's pretty good. But just their faces sometimes are just, they're just great. Like, it's good. The, the expressions that they're able to put are pretty funny, just in and of themselves. So we have that one. And then uh, I, I added that one over here. And so it looks like that's basically the last one. And then I had, did I have a, so this one was 11 80 again, 1180. Okay, so that's going to be the, so that's the general idea. So once we have those put together, I can put these into a script and I have these images to help me to see whether or not they're legitimate or worth possibly rewording. I haven't really reworded them to try to get the 
best the punchline at the end of the line. I've just kind of put down my general ideas of them and then the image, and then that could possibly help me to say, okay, is this one worth me working on the wording for uh, and then adding it to my script? And you can see how I can probably tether these together into a story, basically, uh, would be the general idea, possibly just in the form of a monologue or possibly where I have an, a protagonist and antagonist. I'm talking to someone else, which, again, I can clearly make a protagonist and antagonist image over here. What was I doing with this? I was trying to sniff out something, but you can make a protagonist and antagonist. And again, if you're doing that, sorry for saying again all the time, but if you're doing that, then you can make an image of like who of the two characters you're going to represent. But instead of just making one image, just tell the system to make like 10 of them. So they will look similar, but not the same, allowing you to make like a movie script, putting multiple images in place that kind of move around from time to time enough to catch attention and be interesting, which we might talk more about and if we ever get to the editing uh, side of things, you can move the image from one side to the other side. You can make it large. You can make it small to add some animation. You can put behaviors on it and you can use multiple images that look similar but aren't the same. Even if they're quite different, but they clearly resemble the same idea. I think that looks good personally. Uh, I, I, might not, <laughs> I, I might have a weird uh, style. Maybe my brain doesn't really catch up anyways, but that's the idea.